What's up lords and ladies, welcome back to another video on this channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys 5 techniques on how to tame your bearded dragon. Now as you can see on my shoulder here, we got Wilbur. Now Wilbur, as many of you guys who have been subscribed to this channel, he can be a little bit crazy. But lately he's been a lot more chill, he's able to stay on my shoulder at least for a little bit. And I decided to include him in this video and demonstrate five techniques to use on how to tame a bearded dragon. Now before we begin, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And also, if you are planning on getting a bearded dragon, make sure you're doing the proper research. Now with that being said, let's just get started with the video. <laughs> Wilbur, okay, come here, come here boy. Whatever you do, do not act crazy, okay? I want you to behave. Okay, so tip number one. Now, most of these techniques are going to be for adult bearded dragons, as most of you have adult bearded dragons. If you're looking for baby techniques, I have a whole series on how to tame a bearded dragon when it's a baby. But when it comes to an adult, you have to break old habits. Now, tip number one and technique number one is treadmill hands. Now what I mean by this is not walk on the treadmill with your hands. No, that's not what I mean. But what I mean is you get your bearded dragon and you allow it to walk on your hands and all you're basically replacing is where it's walking. Um, you're basically just, uh, I don't know, it's like you're doing some sort of like ritual or something, I don't know. Sometimes bearded dragons that are on the move like Wilbur here, He's going to want to move around and if he just gently stays put then you are a-okay but if he starts moving at least you could have some support and by doing this over and over um, it's gonna allow him to basically get used to you and in theory get a lot more tame and just be able to just chill on your shoulder without going crazy. Now if you are going to do this make sure you oh, oh my god what are you doing? Oh my god, speaking about crazy, oh my goodness, good thing there was like shelves here because he, oh man, this guy is psycho. <laughs> but like I was saying, make sure you do it on a soft surface so they don't get hurt like Wilbur here. What are you doing dude? No, man, why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> He's literally trying to eat the plant. Dude, I already fed you. Dude, okay, okay, I get it. You're hungry. <laughs> now, technique number two is to use food. Now, getting them used to eating near you or off the tongs, eventually they do tame down. Now, not only getting them used to feeding them with the tongs, but it's also important that you allow them to come to you. If you have a bearded dragon and it's used to feeding off of tongs, you could place your hand inside of the enclosure and have the bearded dragon walk up onto you and that way doing so your bearded dragon over time is going to get used to you and tame down and not act crazy. Now Wilbur here as you can see he still has the tendency to be a little bit crazy and, and, and head bob and do all these things but he's still a pretty chill bearded dragon. If your bearded dragon is trying to bite you and go after you then those are are key signs that that bearded dragon does not trust you at all and it's important that we get them tamed down because you want to handle them you want to be able to hold them and, and you know scratch their chin <laughs> and do all of those fun things with a bearded dragon instead of having an enemy in your house so definitely use food to your advantage these guys are always hungry they're always looking for food so if you're able to use food to your advantage you're gonna be able to tame down your bearded dragon. Okay, so tip number three and technique number three is hold your bearded dragon over the bed. Now, what I mean by this is if your bearded dragon is going crazy and is acting up, you obviously wanna hold your bearded dragon, but if you're holding it near a surface where it could run, it could hide in, it's gonna give your bearded dragon a bad experience. So if you're going to hold a bearded dragon that is crazy and doesn't wanna you know, interact, is use either a bed or a sofa to your advantage. If you have a you know, decent sized mattress and you allow the bearded dragon to basically run all over it, chances are it's not gonna jump off of it or anything and you could basically create a barrier where the bearded dragon, look at this guy, 
Oh my god, dude, we get it. Oh my god. But like I was saying, if you hold your bearded dragon over a surface or you're interacting with them somewhere where it's you know nice and soft and nice and safe, chances are it's not gonna be able to run off and hide underneath something um, or just gets completely spooked by something. Um, a bed is a perfect place where you could basically get your bearded dragon and bond with them a lot more. And I would recommend, you know, allow your bearded dragon just to explore it and then go over there and pet it. But always end the training session on a good note. Don't make it a stressful environment and then put him back inside of the enclosure because chances are your bearded dragon is going to get used to that and never want to come out and actually always run off and get scared. So use, you know, either, you know, a bed or a sofa to your advantage, but also end it on a good note that way. You know, your bearded dragon is like, hey, this is completely safe, this is normal, this is fine, I trust this human, and you know, you guys are gonna bond together. Now, tip number four. Now, this is something that you don't have to do, but it definitely will benefit you if you um, do it. What I recommend is to get a different enclosure to what you already have. Now, if you have the enclosure that I'm going to mention, then chances are you're fine, you're doing great. But if you don't, I would recommend to switch over. Now, the enclosure that I would switch over to is an enclosure that opens at the front. Doesn't matter what brand, it doesn't matter if you made it or anything, but as long as the opening is at the front where you could get the bearded dragon at an eye level, it's gonna do you wonder. Oh my God, dude, you, you have to behave. <laughs> but it's going to do you wonders if you get an enclosure that opens at the front because the last thing you need is a bearded dragon not to trust you and to basically just be wandering off. Wilbur, just stay up there please, okay? <laughs> but the last thing you want is a bearded dragon um, to not trust you and when you have an opening at the top, there's nothing wrong with that but the opening basically is at the top and when you go reach down on it, the bearded dragon thinks, you know, something is going on and gets spooked and wants to run off like Wilbur at the back here. But if you have it at the front where you just slide it or you open it, then chances are you are, are at an eye level and you could basically interact with the bearded dragon with ease and it's so much more easier to clean as well so i would recommend getting one that opens at the front you know exoterra makes some great ones zoomed as well and if you really want to get one um you know custom made you can as well i highly recommend getting the ones that open at the front it just makes training a bearded dragon that is not used to you so much more easier so hopefully that helps out now last but not least is to pet your bearded dragon whenever you get the chance now of course allow your bearded dragon to settle in and give it its space and if your bearded dragon has already been settling in from time just give your bearded dragon some space but what I recommend is that you pet them as often as you possibly can to a certain extent. Now, I don't mean go and mess with them every single time and stress them out, but if you are inside of the reptile room um, or inside of your bedroom, wherever you're keeping your bearded dragon, I would recommend just going there, opening the enclosure, petting them for a few seconds, closing it, moving away, and that's it. If your bearded dragon chills and doesn't panic, then you know, you're building that good reputation with your bearded dragon to at least be used to your touch. Now, there's certain places that bearded dragons don't like being touched. Bearded dragons, for whatever reason, don't like being touched on their toes or picked up. Some bearded dragons don't mind it, but the sweet spot for a bearded dragon is right here, right underneath the chin. <laughs> you can see Wilbur, he's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> but right underneath the chin, in this area, it's a sweet spot for them. If you go and just start touching them on their head, the same thing. But if you start touching them on their tail, they might not like it as much. They're almost like cats, you know, cats and dogs. They like being scratched over here. They don't like being scratched on their belly as much. They just start, you know, it just feels weird for them. But right on the head. <laughs> but chances are, if, if they do like it, you know, especially if they're, you know, chilled and inside of their enclosure, if you put them right on that sweet spot, 
they're going to basically just fall asleep and that's what you need. You need a bearded dragon that is just chill when you're around it. So getting it used to you, even if you know it's crazy and it just doesn't want to be touched or anything, eventually that bearded dragon is going to learn to trust you. And if you're going in there randomly and petting it, then you're building that good reputation with that bearded dragon. And like I said before, you want to end it on a good note. You know, if your bearded dragon just panics and starts spazzing out, then I will just walk away and leave. Um, but if you're petting it and your bearded dragon is enjoying it, I wouldn't overdo it. I wouldn't just immediately pick it up and, you know, put it on your shoulder unless, like, you know, it's ready for that. But if you notice your bearded dragon just really crazy and acting up and you're petting it on its head and it's chill, I would just end it right there and walk away. Your bearded dragon's gonna be like, that was amazing like I want more and like just be thinking about you all the time and like probably even text you at night being like hey <laughs> I don't know but uh, your bearded dragon is gonna be you know happy it's gonna end happy and when you come and do that again it's going to appreciate it more and from there you could probably take it a step further but I'll take it baby steps if your bearded dragon is crazy it's gonna take time for it to tame down so hopefully this techniques helped out one way or another, um, you know, like I said, I really love bearded dragons and um, I hope that you guys have a good experience with yours. So if you guys need any help, be sure to reach me at underscore Lord of Lion on Instagram. I'm more than happy to help. Wilbur, please do not do anything crazy. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my goodness. A poor bonsai tree. But, ugh. What the hell? There's, <laughs> there's, there's like mushrooms growing on it. Ew. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'm Lord of Lion. This right here is Wilbur. Keep the blood pumping, and I'll see you guys in here my goes. next video. Go. Peace. You gotta hit that notification. Hit that notification. Hit that notification button, baby. You gotta hit that notification. Hit that notification.